Scanning a QR code, or indeed any kind of visible code like a barcode, can be done by Apple's AV Foundation library. Now this does not integrate into SwiftUI terribly smoothly, so to skip over a whole lot of pain, I've packaged up a QR code reader into a Swift package we can add and use directly inside Xcode. My package is called Code Scanner, and it's available on GitHub under the MIT license at github.com slash two straws slash code scanner. And you can, means you can look at its code, inspect it, edit it if you want to. It's all open for you to use. Here though, we're gonna add it to Xcode by following these simple steps. First, go to the file menu and choose add package dependencies. Then up here in the URL area, that's where we enter the URL to code scanner. Again, that is HTTPS colon slash slash github dot com slash two straws slash code scanner like that then press enter there it is and finally for this up to next major version option that's fine that's a good default dependency rule that means you get any bug fixes and any additional features in the future but not any breaking changes once you have that done just press add package then again add package it'll be downloaded and installed into your project. Now this code scanner package gives us a code scanner view, which is Swifty Y view we can use. And this can be shown inside a sheet and it'll handle code in a clean, isolated way. Now I know I keep repeating myself, but I hope you can see the continuing theme here. The best way to write Swifty Y code is to isolate functionality in discrete methods and wrappers. So all you expose your Swifty Y layouts is clean, clear and unambiguous. Now, we already have a scan button inside our prospects view, somewhere down here, this thing. Uh, this thing inserts sample data right now so we can test our list work correctly, which is good at the time. But we're gonna use this to trigger actual QR code scanning. So, our first step is gonna be to add a new state property to this view to track whether we're currently showing our uh, scanning view or not. So I'll say here, at state private var is showing scanner is false. So again, early we had this test functionality down here in the scan button, this thing here. This thing is not needed anymore, okay? Just delete that all and, and instead replace it with simply saying, yes, go ahead and show our scanning. So we'll do is showing scanner is true, like that. Now when it comes to handling the result of our scan, I've made the code scanner package do literally all the work of figuring out what the code is, how to send it back, yada, yada, yada. So all we gotta do is catch the result and process it somehow. Now when the code scanner view finds a code, it'll call a completion closure with a result instance containing details about the code that was found, or an error saying what the problem was. Maybe the camera wasn't available, maybe it couldn't scan codes or who knows what. Regardless of what code or error comes back, we're just going to dismiss the view. We can add more code shortly to do more work. So first we're gonna say up at the top here, add an import for that new code scanner package we imported, and then add a new method to prospects view that'll handle a scan result. So we'll say down here, there's a method called func handle scan accept a result. Now this result, again, is going to be a result type containing either the scan result, the information we asked for, or a scan error if things went wrong somehow. Again, inside here, we're gonna add more code later on. But one thing we can say for sure right now is once we have a scan result, good or bad, we are no longer showing the scanning view. Hide that. Now, an important part. Before we show the scanner and try to handle its result, we've got to ask the user for permission to use the camera. Is it okay? To do that, you want to choose hot prospects at the top here, the top one with the app icon. Then choose targets, hot prospects. Then go to this info tab. 
In here are our existing settings. I want to right click somewhere inside here and choose add row. And I'll ask you what you want to add. There's a whole bunch of options here. You want to scroll way, way down to the privacy section, all the way down here. Boom. Uh, hello, dog. You want privacy camera usage description, this one right here. What tell the user we ask for permission to use the camera? Again, I'll show a mesh on the screen. It's meshed over here. We can say what it wants it should be. What do you want to tell them? And for us, we'll say simply, uh, we need to scan QR codes, which is sort of self evident for users, you know, in a, a QR code scanning app. But we've got to put something in there so iOS can show something on the screen. There you go, dogs. Right. So with that in place, we are now ready to try and scan some actual QR codes. We already have that is showing scanner state that determines whether they're showing a code scanner or not. So we now can attach a sheet modifier to present our scanner UI in SwiftUI territory. So in our prospects view here, we're going to look for our current SwiftUI view hierarchy, this toolbar right here, and then add to that this new modifier to do a sheet. So we'll say here, uh, there's a new sheet. Is presented is dollar is showing scanner. And what should go inside there? Because creating a scanner view takes at least three parameters. We're going to tell this thing an array, I'm oh, sorry, an array of the types of codes we want to scan. Now we're only scanning QR code in this app. So just saying, oh, just give me QR codes is fine. But iOS supports a whole bunch of other types of codes too. Second, we're going to give this thing a string to use as simulated data. We're in Xcode Simulator here, testing things out. It does not support using the camera to scan codes. Even though our Mac has a camera built in, it doesn't sort of sync across somehow. And so what will happen is we provide some simulated data saying, oh yeah, here's my test string. And code scanner view will automatically present a replacement UI in this debug mode. So we can still test that things work correctly. This replacement UI will automatically send back whatever we pass in as simulated data. And third, we're going to give this thing a completion function to use. This could be an inline closure, but we just wrote the handle scan method. So we'll have to use that. So inside here, we'll make our code scanner view. As you can see, this thing takes a lot of options to exactly customize how it should work. In our case, we want the code types and we want simulated data and we want that completion. So I'll say here, simply just simulated data like that, starting sim and enter will fill it in for me correctly. Code types, an array of types to scan for. There's a whole bunch of these supported by iOS. Lots and lots and lots of dog body, I mean, that one even is, but anyway, there's a lot. We care about QR, so let's do QR now. For simulated data, this is example data that should be passed back. Now remember, our data is name, line break, email address. So for our simulated data, I'm going to say simply, let's pass back Paul Hudson, line break, backslash n, and email address, paul at hackingwithswift.com. And now for completion, the function to call when it's found a result or an error, we'll just say call handle scan like that. And that's enough to get most of the screen working. Isn't that right, dog? But there is one last step here. We're going to replace all that more code to come comment in our handle scan method with some actual functionality to handle the data we found. Now, again, the data we're pass passing back here is a name, then a line break, then an email address. So if our scanning result comes back successfully, hooray, we can pull apart that code into those two components and use them to make a new prospect object. And if code scanning fails somehow, we'll just print an error out. You can show some more interesting UI there if you want to. So down in our handle scan method here, replace this more code to come method. We'll say switch on result. If it was successful, then give me the result inside that so we can work with it, the resulting uh, data. So we'll say our details is that result, that's our scan result here. And you'll see it has the, the position to the corners, the image it was scanned, da -da -da, what kind of thing it was, in our case, QR code the strings that we care about, what's inside the code. 
grab that and then say components separated by backslash n. So pull that thing into two parts on a line break. Now remember, they could have scanned anything. They could have scanned a QR code from a box of cereal for all we know. So we've got to be careful here. Did we get two pieces of information from that QR code? We'll say guard details.count is two, else return. Don't proceed if you haven't got exactly two pieces of information here. If we do have that, we're good to go. We can make a new person object using our prospect class. The name will be details zero, email address details one, and is connected, will be, uh, sorry, contacted will be false because obviously a new prospect here. And once we have that, we can say model context dot insert that new person. So that's how we handle a success case. When things go wrong, we're gonna have a failure case with some kind of error inside here. Again, I'll simply say print scanning failed with that error dot localized description. With that, go ahead and run the code now. So again, I'm using the simulator here. You probably are there as well. If you've got a real device, please do that, try it too. Uh, in the sim, you'll see a scan button. And this is the simulated UI you'll only see inside Xcode and simulated debugging stuff. So it's saying here, you're in the sim, there's no camera available, but we have simulated data. So just tap on this thing and boom, there's your actual uh, data coming back nicely. If you're on a real device, please do try it out. You'll see a permission message asking the user, do you want to allow camera use? Uh, if you grant that, you'll get a scan of you. So you can then go ahead and try it out. And if you want to try it out, you want to launch the app in a sim like we have here, go to the me view, add some text here and basically scan that with the app here. So you can scan the me tab with your live phone and that way see data on your phone with real information behind it.